Nintendo Switch. Other than your basic gunk from use, the port seems fine, feels sound, so it's safe to test. First test we'll perform is with our Benchtop PSU, and we're drawing a steady 0.41 amps. Let's switch over to our OEM charger. Okay, and as you can see, we are communicating with the M92 T36. We are drawing 15 volts. Again, no picture. With that kind of current draw, we'll hook it up to the computer and see if it's recognized by the computer. It is not, so it's not an RCM. We'll open it up just enough to do some testing first and go from there. We have it apart enough to do some testing. These are our common fault testing zones. We'll start with the M92 T36, work our way up the board towards the port, or we'll check test pads. Then we'll work over to the BK24183, see if we can find a problem. Let's begin our testing. What we're testing are the capacitors surrounding the chip and the lines we don't generally want shorter to ground are the lines going to the chip. We'll start with this capacitor right here. This capacitor is actually tied to the Pi 3 USB on the back. Let's see if we have a short there. And we do. It is dead shorted. So we very likely have a Pi 3 USB issue. So first capacitor we tested, we already found a problem. Let's check the rest of them. There shouldn't be any more shorts around this chip because we are getting 15 volts. Generally speaking, this chip has to be functional for you to get 15 volts. This capacitor here has two lines going to the chip. In that case, one side will be ground. Move the board and check our MOSFET area. Check our little filter. Make sure our invincible fuse is still being invincible. We wouldn't be getting 15 volts if it wasn't. Check our test pads. None of these test pads should be short to ground. None of these test pads should be short to ground. This coil should not have a short to ground, but it should have continuity going through it. So, I mean, you can get through the gunk to get contact. There we go. Same rules apply to the BQ24193, except that it has multiple capacitors with multiple lines going to the chip. Everything looks good. So I believe we have a Pi 3 USB issue. So let's get it apart so that we can take a look at the other side of the board and test around and see what's going on. 130 degrees to release the adhesive on these foam pads. Assuming it's not very old adhesive. Usually we'll get the job done. Fortunately that pad is ripped. So we can get this pad off in one piece. We got that pad off in one piece. That adhesive is pretty old. Back this ribbon out. Put your spudgers on the ears. And just back it out. Don't flick it out. Our common fault testing zones on side A. We do believe we have a problem here. Let's test our Pi 3 USB in continuity mode. And we're going to test this big capacitor right here. And just like the other chips, the line going to the chip is the side we don't want shorter to ground. But it is dead shorted to ground. Let's check everything else around the chip. See if we have any shorts to ground on our filters. We should not. Let's make sure all of our filters are okay. We want continuity going from the chip to the port, basically. At least that in that direction. But side to side, we do not want any continuity. And we do not. So it appears our only problem is the Pi 3 USB at this point. For your orientation purposes, this target is our problematic area. So this is where we'll be working on the board. So let's set up to deal with that while I'm setting up my equipment. So my expected temperatures for this job, these temperatures are brought to you by the associate links in the description. If you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you and won't cost you an extra dime. All right, let's set about removal. I'll remove it. We'll test to make sure we got rid of our short. If we did, great. If we didn't, not so great. Boom, pull. We have a convenient ground pad. Let's check. Uh-oh, we still have a short. That is not good news, kids. We'll fire up the thermal camera and see what we can find. I have an announcement. I, being Micromage Repair, am moving back home to Texas. My primary service area in Texas will be North Richland Hills, Hearst, Euless, 
Bedford, and Fort Worth in general. All mail-in services will be temporarily paused through the month of August and will resume sometime in September when I've worked out all the logistics. If you're a local shop in those areas and need microsoldering services, please reach out. Talk to y'all from Texas in September. And it looks like we're getting warm right there in the CPU area. That is unfortunate. You can see the CPU heating up there. Our CPU is short. And that is Sayonara. Unfortunately, this is just how repairs go sometimes. If you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one. And I'll see you there.